Hello and welcome to this video in which we find the discrete time Fourier series coefficients for a periodic square wave. Uh, this turns out to be a fairly useful exercise uh, for a couple reasons. One is that uh, periodic square waves show up a lot and if you know the Fourier series coefficients for these square waves um, it makes a lot of interesting analysis things possible uh, that you can do with the properties of the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. Um, this will also be instructive because it shows how to uh, uh, do uh, the analysis. Um, this is uh, actually going to use two tricks that show up quite a bit in discrete time Fourier series analysis. So the signal that we want to um, take or find the Fourier series coefficients for is a periodic square wave. It has period cap n and we'll assume that the pulse width is n sub p samples. So I've drawn an example here. If n were equal to 10 and n sub p were equal to 6, then I would have uh, 6 samples that have a magnitude of 1, and then 4 samples that would have a magnitude of 0, then another 6 that have a magnitude of 1, and so on. Okay, so this is the waveform that we will uh, be finding the Fourier series coefficients for. Now, um, we will do this for an arbitrary n and an arbitrary n sub p, which makes the analysis a little more difficult, but it also makes the end result quite useful. So, let's see, the first thing we need to do is bring up a blank window, and uh, let's write down the equation for the Fourier series uh, coefficients. And we'll just work through that equation and see what we get at the end. Uh, at the end, for those of you who just can't make yourself sit through the derivations, uh, we have plots of the Fourier series coefficients for different values of n and n sub p. So here we go. The formula for c sub k is 1 over n summation n going over one period of x. And in this case, I'll have it go 0 to n minus 1 x of n e to the minus j k n 2 pi over n. So this is just the formula for the Fourier series coefficients. Okay, so let's start seeing what we can do with this. If we go back to our picture, you'll notice that x of n is 1 when n is between 0 and n sub p minus 1, and then it's 0 for values of n larger than n sub p until you get to the next period. So uh, what that means is that for n uh, from n sub p to cap n minus 1, uh, the terms in the summation are going to be 0 because they're multiplied by this x of n which is 0. Which means in my analysis here that I can rewrite this as 1 over n summation n is equal to 0 to n sub p minus 1 e to the minus j k n 2 pi over n. Okay, and the reason I can do that is when n is between 0 and n sub p minus 1, x of n is 1, so I've got 1 times this e, and for n larger than n sub p, or n sub p minus 1, uh, so for n going from n sub p to n minus 1, x of n is 0. So those terms go away. Okay, so that's pretty handy. Now, um, let's look at the particular special case when k is equal to 0. Okay, when k is equal to 0, then this term here is 0, and I have e to the 0, which is 1. So when k is equal to 0, I have just 1 over n, summation n going from 0 to n sub p minus 1 of this term, which is 1. And uh, if I take 1 and sum it n sub p times, I get n sub p. So c0 is just going to be n sub p over n. Okay, And you can see, if I go back, uh, that n sub p over n is just the average value of this waveform averaged over one period. 
Okay, so um, that takes care of c equals 0. I just have n minus 1 other uh, Fourier series coefficients to come up with. Uh, and we can do that actually all with the same analysis. So when k is not equal to 0, I have um, c sub k is 1 over n, summation n going from 0 to n p minus 1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this exponential and actually write it as e to the minus j k 2 pi over n, all of this raised to the nth power. Okay, so all I've done is I factored this n out of the exponent and used it to say um, that um, it, I, I can write this as this term raised to the nth power. And the reason I want to do that is um, because I can then use the summation of a geometric series formula in the sense that I can call I can call this guy alpha and it's alpha raised to the n. So what I have now is a summation n going from 0 to cap n, p, n sub p minus 1 of alpha to the n. Well, this then is 1 over n, that's basically from here, and then the summation of this guy is going to be 1 minus alpha n sub p over 1 minus alpha. Okay, that's the result for the sum of a geometric series. So all I need to do now is, uh, well, alpha is given by this guy here. So I just plug this in here as well as in here. And I get the following. Uh, let's see. We'll clear off the top half here. So I have then that c sub k is 1 minus, oh, I still have my 1 over n. I keep threatening to forget that. I hope if I forget it, uh, well, I would tell you to uh, keep me honest, but since you can't really yell at me, well, I suspect many of you do yell at me through the screen, um, but you can't yell at me in a way that I'll hear it. I'll just try to be good. Okay, so I have this exponential raised to the n sub p power divided by 1 minus e to the minus j k 2 pi over n. Okay, that's this exponential raised to the first power. Okay, so um, now I'm going to do a trick. Uh, if you've uh, looked at the video of a simple example, you've seen this trick before. But what I'm basically going to do is treat this 1 as an e to the 0, then split the difference on the exponent between the e to the 0 and the e to the minus jk2 pi over cap n, factor that out, and then the term that's left I can turn into a sign. So uh, to show you how that really works, I'm going to write this as e to the minus jk 2 pi over n times 1 half, okay? And a lot of this stuff will cancel, but I'm not going to cancel it. Well, I guess I can cancel it now. I guess I might as well. Um, but by splitting the difference here between this e to the minus j k 2 pi over n and a 0, and putting it in this exponent, I'm left with e to the j k 2 pi over n times 1 half minus e to the minus j k 2 pi over n times 1 half. Okay, and again I can cancel these twos. And uh, you'll immediately notice, because again uh, you've spent a lot of time staring at Euler's formula, that this expression here is 2j times sine k pi over n. Okay, so the denominator here, 
I've actually converted into e to the minus jk pi over n times 2j sine k pi over n. Okay, so we'll put this out here just to make sure you remember it. Okay, so this is the denominator. Well, what happens to the numerator? We can do essentially the same operation, although it will be a little more complicated. Um, the way we do that is to note first that this uh, exponential here can be written e to the minus j k n sub p 2 pi over n. Okay, and so I have an e to the 0, that's what this 1 is, and this guy, again, I'll split the difference, factor that out, so I have an e to the minus j k n sub p 2 pi over n times 1 half, and then that gets multiplied by e to the j k n sub p 2 pi over n times 1 half minus e to the minus j k n p 2 pi over n to the 1 half. Okay, so what I've done now is I've taken the denominator, or I'm sorry, the numerator, and factored it into something that looks like this. And I guess now we can get rid of these twos. And we immediately recognize this guy as 2j sine k n p pi over n. And I still have this exponential term out here, e to the minus j k n p pi over n. Okay, so this term was in the numerator up here. The blue term, this term here, was in the denominator. And you can see that the two j's here and here are going to cancel. And when I plug everything in that I've got then, I will have 1 over n in the numerator. We have e to the minus j k n p pi over n sine k n p pi over n divided by e to the minus j k pi over n sine k pi over n. Okay, so we've got a nice, um, a nice closed form solution for our c sub k's. And I'll rewrite this just a little bit. I can take, um, well, let's see, we'll rewrite it in this way. We have 1 over n sine k n p pi over n divided by sine k pi over n. That's basically the magnitude part. And then the phase part will be e to the minus j k n p minus 1 times pi over n. This is the phase part. Okay, so there you have it. Um, if we start, if we look at graphs then of magnitude and phase, for the case where n is equal to 20 and mp is equal to 4, so this is a fairly narrow pulse relative to the period, I get something that looks like this. Uh, it has a fairly wide uh, spectrum, and you can see the phase uh, just kind of cycles through. Um, for the case where n is equal to 20 and np is 7, so it's a wider pulse, you can see I get more uh, uh, higher magnitudes down here and uh, less easily discernible pattern here. Uh, in this case, the phase, strangely enough, is all negative. 
and if I um, say n is equal to 20 and np is equal to 10, so that the pulse has 10, uh, or the rectangular waveform has 10 samples of 1, then 10 samples of 0, uh, you see that um, all of the even-numbered Fourier series coefficients except c0 are 0, and all of the odd-numbered Fourier series coefficients all have the same phase. So, anyway, um, the goal of this example was to, one, show you how to work a discrete time Fourier series and show you, for the case where you have a periodic square wave, how you can get a formula that's generally useful. So, hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.